Hey guys, welcome to Jenkins Pipeline Tutorial by Simply Learn. My name is Chidanan and let me quickly walk you through the topics that I plan to cover as a part of this tutorial. At a very high level, I'll be introducing you Jenkins and then get into more details of the continuous integration process. As most of you are aware, most of the softwares in recent times are developed using some or the other kind of agile practices and continuous integration is an important or key factor in all such agile software development life cycle. Next, I'll be looking at the software delivery pipeline from a perspective of if someone were to visualize all the steps that is required from the time someone gives out a requirement, a software requirement, it gets translated into some sort of a code, it gets tested, maybe moved into one of the testing platforms and then migrated across or moved across or propagated across various environments and then finally put out in production. If one were to put a value stream mapping for all these steps that is involved, each of these steps could translate into a simple job within Jenkins. I will first look at what existed in Jenkins uh, or rather pre-Jenkins 2.0 where we had a way of upstream downstream mapping of jobs. There were some plugins that allowed us to visualize all the jobs at one shot starting from the first job that triggered and then I will get into the most powerful groovy scripting that are there in Jenkins 2.0 or post Jenkins 2.0. These groovy scripting gives us much more powerful ways of defining our pipelines. There are two different ways in which you can write your scripts. One is a scripted one, the other one is declarative one. There's very subtle change or difference between each one of them but these gives you a much more flexible and much more powerful feature to write complicated pipelines for your software delivery. Having said that, most of these topics that I'm going to discuss will be followed up with a demo and the source code for most of these would be on our GitHub repository. All right, now as a prerequisite, probably it may be a good idea in case if you haven't already watched, please watch our previous video wherein I mentioned how to install Jenkins and how to put up some sample jobs on our Jenkins server. So what exactly is Jenkins? Jenkins is nothing but a powerful automation server that is written in Java and it is a web application which can also be run on any web server. But what makes Jenkins an ideal choice for a continuous integration server? Jenkins has got wonderful plugins that allows it to connect to all kinds of uh, tools, software development, deployment, coding, build, source code kind of a tools. That is what makes Jenkins very, very powerful. From a continuous integration perspective, Jenkins can connect to various source code uh, servers and it has also got plugins that allows it to build, deploy, test all kinds of software artifacts. So this is what makes Jenkins an ideal choice for a continuous integration server. But mind you, for me, Jenkins is nothing but a very, very powerful automated server. At the heart of it, there's a lot of automation in it, but the powerfulness of Jenkins is more so because of the tools that it integrates with and the kind of plugins that it has got. What is continuous integration? From a software development uh, lifecycle, assuming that the software delivery is happening in very small sprints, maybe three to four weeks is your delivery lifecycle. And there are a bunch of developers who are located in different locations who are working on the same code base, on the same branch. If the code check-ins do not happen quickly, as in every day, if at all developers stagger their code check-ins into the repository, finding problems at a later stage would be very costly for the whole project. Early detection of any such issues would be you know, quick to resolve and would not affect your delivery schedules. So as a part of continuous integration, what is requested or what is demanded is that every developer checks in code pretty much you know, every day. As long as it doesn't break the code, he checks in code pretty much regularly. And at the end of a day, you have an automated server which kind of wakes up, pulls the latest code. So this code has got the integrations of all the code bases that has been checked in by various developers. So it pulls out the code. It builds on a completely different server. That is the CI server, which pulls this code. It builds it. It's got all the tools that is required to compile it, build it, and test it. And assuming that you've got some good percentage of test case automation, you're also having a, most of your regression test suites automated. If at all there is a way by which in a couple of hours time when the team is out or rather the team is sleeping, you have 
verification that happens at a very crucial level and then any breakages even before the team arrives for the next day if these are notified to the whole team members saying an email going out saying that something got broken most of the code would be pretty okay from the perspective of compilation errors or a build errors it is the functionality and the regression that the team is worried about so if these can be automated tested very very quickly and very very fast and then any breakages are detected early during the day right by the time the next day people come in they know what is broken and possibly they know what code uh, check-in broke that particular thing and they can have a quick stand-up meeting and then they discuss what broke the code and able to fix it so this way any problem that could possibly arise at a later point in time if at all they kind of move to the initial phase of the project any detection that is early doesn't really hurt the team so this is all continuous integration that is about and Jenkins plays an important role in being the continuous integration server because it's got connections to anything and everything all kinds of tools I mean and then it is also got various ways on which triggering the job which is a part of its automation strategy now that we know what is continuous integration and where does Jenkins come into picture let's look at the rest of the tasks of our software development lifecycle so if at all I were to visualize the kind of steps that is involved in delivering my software possibly the continuous integration phase would be somewhere here where multiple developers are developing on that and then we have a little bit of a stable code that is there that can be kind of moved across because I want to go ahead with uh, the particular build that I have and then I want to migrate that I, I want to propagate that across various environments so if you consider the standard software delivery approach in the first cycle you just do some minimal testing and then you kind of move that to one of the environments and from there you kick off more and more tests they could be integration test they could be acceptance test they could be functionality check they could be a stress test they could be a load test it could be a system integration test all kinds of tests that you can think about and all the way maybe propagating the build across various environments if all this can be considered as various steps the workflow is such that as and when the build moves across various phases if there's any failure of course the build propagation kind of stops everyone gets notified but if at all everything goes well so your workflow is progressing well and at the end of the workflow you eventually have a code which is pretty much good to release now mind you I make an assumption here that most of your test cases are automated and you have a good percentage of coverage of your test cases but if that is not the scenario then possibly there are some automated tests or checks that may be required in between but if the workflow can kind of accommodate all that as well you know you can visualize this as the steps that is required for your software development or a software delivery lifecycle now in Jenkins the way this kind of translates is that each of these tasks can be put out as a job so now let me quickly uh, let you know or let me quickly demo what existed in pre Jenkins 2.0 where I could put up a couple of jobs and I can connect them using the upstream downstream linking mechanism so if this job one if at all it is a build and unit test cases if at all that passes successfully job two gets triggered if the job two is more about uh, running some more automated test or possibly deploying it to environment and then kicking off some more test cases that would be job two but if the deployment fails or if some of the other test cases fail it would not propagate to the third job all right so let me quickly bring up my Jenkins instance and put up some sample jobs and tell you how to connect that or rather how would one connect that using Jenkins 2.0 or pre Jenkins 2.0 release I have now brought up my Jenkins instance and in case some of you don't know how to install Jenkins or you don't know how to bring up your Jenkins instance I would strongly recommend that you watch our previous videos on simply learn YouTube channel where I've detailed out the steps that is required for you to install Jenkins and bring it up so all right so I brought up my Jenkins instance let me put up few of those jobs now mind you I'm going to cover the pre Jenkins 2.0 feature here all right so let me put up my first job all right I hope I don't have that job I say it's a freestyle project I don't want to change anything I'm going to put up a very very simple job here it's in batch command I say echo first job triggered at all right that's my first job now let me put up my second job it's a freestyle project All right, that's my second job. All 
all right that's my third job i've got a very very simple uh, echo statements in this so it just prints out the system date and the time in it all right so i could run these jobs individually if i want so and let me just check running my third job so this is what i get in the console output third job triggered at date and time oops let me fix that right that should fix it let me check my second job all right that's my second job all right so i've got three jobs now if i were to link them together or if at all i want a scenario where after the first job is successfully run i would like to trigger my second job so I would do a small configuration change in here. I would say after this first job is run, I want to trigger the second job. So I have something called as a post build action. So I can say that trigger some other jobs from here. So if you see this, publish, record, deploy, all right, trigger, 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 trigger. Let me check the other one. Build other projects. This is what I would want to do. So after the first job is done, I want to trigger my second job. All right, I would say save this now let me go back to my second job and then trigger the third job after the second job is done all right i will add this post build build other projects third job again i'm not really sure if you guys notice this there is various configurations as to when exactly do you want to trigger the other job and the default one is trigger only if the build is stable so typically this is the configuration that would need we definitely don't want the third job to be triggered in case the second job fails all right, so this is the combination that I want, or this is the choice that I want, and I save this. Now I have three of my jobs. If you see this, the second job, the upstream job is the first job. So let me check this kind of a pipeline. What I've set here is a very, very simple pipeline. So after my first job gets triggered, if I build this guy, right, the second job gets triggered after the build, first job is built. So if I click on the second job, all right, so the first job was to get the second job and after the second job it is triggering the third job so this is how first job second job and third job were kind of linked but it's pretty hard to visualize this as to you know if i need to see one holistic picture where after the first job after the second job after the third job what was the flow it's not possible for me to visualize that that's wherein i install a plugin so let me go to manage plugins right here i think i already have it installed for those of you who don't have it installed you can go to the available button i mean available tab and click on that the plugin is called delivery pipeline plugin i already have it installed in case you don't have it installed you just go to the available you click on this and say install without restart this is the plugin that i want you to install all right so now we have that plugin installed so what i want to do is after the plugin is installed you see something like this so this is where i would create a new visualization for the pipeline that i've created so i would say my first pipeline or i give a name for my visualization i would say yes this upstream downstream dependencies this is exactly what i want and there are a bunch of settings here i'll not look at any of that now what i want is i just want to tell this view that you know the i can give a name for this i would give it as simply learn pipeline and what's important is that I specify what is the first job that should be picked up as a part of this pipeline. And the final job is optional because it knows that if the first job is triggering this other job, it knows where to end this whole uh, life cycle. So I define a pipeline, I need to give a name for my component and I initialize that as my, I mean, I give it the first job. So I say, okay, and there you go. This is much better. This gives you a beautiful visualization of as to what happened after the first job, second job was run, second job. If you click on any of these, that will in fact take me to that job. All right. There is also one other option, which is pretty good option in my opinion, which is about edit view. Yes, this is where it is. Enable start of a new pipeline build. Let me apply and let me click OK on this. What it gives me is a way in which I can trigger my whole pipeline from here. So if I click on this, there you see the first job getting triggered the second job is still running the green means it's, it's all run properly and nicely the second one is triggered now the third one it's still running all right so this is the pipeline that existed prior to jenkins 2.0 this is pretty decent enough and if you see there's a one-to-one -one mapping but if at all you remember we could go and add multiple dependencies for the projects that i set in just to give an example let's say we go to my first job 
I can do a configuration here and nothing stops me from triggering multiple jobs after this by giving me a comma. I can trigger multiple jobs here in case if I have to run few things parallelly, this also gives me that option to do that. But having said that, this was the most primitive way in which the jobs were kind of visualized and run prior to Jenkins 2.0. Now, this feature became such an important feature. The users wanted more and more complicated because the pipelines was not a lot complicated. It was not just one job after the other. There were multiple jobs that has to be run. And there was also an introduction of the Jenkins agents where multiple tasks could be parallelly run on different agents. So they wanted to club all of that and the pipeline could have all the such complicated stuff. That's where in post Jenkins 2.0 or in Jenkins 2.0, Jenkins uh, released a version which has got the feature of pipeline which can be written in Groovy scripts. Now, Groovy is wonderful scripting language. It's very, very powerful. Anybody can visualize your pipeline or write your pipeline using programming language. And the point of everything as code where this whole Groovy script gets into your source code repository. So instead of putting jobs here and in case my Jenkins kind of fails, you know, there's a crash on my Jenkins, I don't get back these jobs. How do I bring back all these jobs uh, back? So everything has code. That's the DevOps principle. So the pipelines will be written as scripts. That is what I'm going to do in my next exercise. In my previous example, I showed you the crude way, in my opinion, of putting up a Jenkins pipeline. But this is what existed prior to Jenkins 2.0. And now I have post Jenkins 2.0 in terms of my version, Jenkins version is 2.107. So this supports something called as a scripted pipeline, wherein you can write your pipeline in terms of groovy scripts. No need to put up any jobs here and remember how exactly you put up these individual jobs. You can write a pipeline script in terms of groovy language. Let me quickly show you a very, very simple and elementary pipeline that I have. This is what a groovy script would look like. Pipeline, any agent can run this. Stages, there are individual stages that is defined as a subset of these stages. So the first stage is the compile stage and stage has got some steps in it. You can have multiple steps in it and once only after all these steps successfully complete, that's wherein the stage gets through perfectly with the, with the pass. So there's a compile a stage, there's a J unit stage, there's a quality gate stage, there's a deploy stage, and I'm really not doing anything much within this other than echoing, you know, some text within each of these stages. And what's interesting is at the end, there's something called as a post, which is similar to, or you can kind of equate that to what would be there in a try catch kind of a block. So post always, meaning this would run all the time. Success only if at all, all the steps that were above in terms of the stages, they were completed successfully without any failures. So typically you would have your email that is going out here saying that the build is successful and stuff like that. Failure, if something went bad, if any of the step resulted in a failure, this particular block will get executed. Unstable, whenever any build is marked unstable. If at all, only few things that failed within your test run and you would want to mark the build as unstable are changed. This is an interesting option. So this compares the present run with the previous run. And if there's any change, meaning if the previous run was a failure and the present run is a success or vice versa, this would get triggered. So this is what a simple pipeline script would look like. So let me copy this pipeline and let me put up a simple job for running this pipeline. So let me open up my Jenkins, say a new, I would say scripted pipeline. Yeah, this is what I want. I don't want to choose a freestyle project. This is going to be a pipeline project. So I would say pipeline and say, okay. All right, this has got far less options than the other jobs that we put up. So general, I don't want anything here. I don't want any build trigger, right? So this is where I kind of, I can paste in whatever I had copied. There's also something called as a pipeline syntax or a syntax generator. This is like a lookup where you can choose what you want to do and choose the option that is specific to those steps and you will get a pipeline generated or a script generated for you. Jenkins knows that you're not very good at understanding these pipelines. So this gives you this sandbox kind of an environment where you can check out whatever you want to do as a part of your pipeline and then get the equivalent groovy script from here. Let me look at this in a bit later. So for now, I have my pipeline syntax already copied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste what I copied. All right, so this looks good. 
okay i am not connecting to any github repository of any of that i'm just running a very very simple pipeline which has got some steps in it and it just compiles or rather it just puts out some messages saying that this stage completed successfully and stuff like that so let me save this and let me try to run this scripted pipeline all right if you see this you would see each of those steps going through and if at all i look at the console output compile successfully unit passed all the stages passed there was a pass the failures doesn't show up you would see the messages from our post or the try catch block that i was mentioning earlier so this is how one would put up a pipeline and you also get to see the visualized view of your pipeline that says which stage run after which phase how much time did it take and you can click on any of these and get into looking at the logs from that particular pipeline run that was pretty easy wasn't it now let me give you another scenario for a pipeline wherein the source code of my pipeline would be in a github repository and i will write scripts to grab this particular code and run some part of the code which is there as a part of the repository so let me look at the repository that i have i have a repository out here on the simply learn github account which is called the pipeline script and if you see in there there are a bunch of batch files that are there so the first batch file would be a build.batch so there's nothing in it except that it is just trying to build a particular project you can visualize this as individual batch files which actually contain the scripts for building running deploying and checking the quality gate of your particular project so i have a couple of batch files that is here and this is on the github repository so i would need to write jenkins job will log into my github account and then check out this particular repository from my account and then run these batch files as a part of those individual steps within within the scripted pipeline so let me check as to how i could do that let me put up a new project for this let me call this scripted pipeline scripted pipeline from github all right so let this be a pipeline project that's good enough for me let me see my scripts all right now this is where i need to put in the scripts for pulling out the code repository from my github server and running those batch files that are there as a part of the repository so what i want to do is i already have the skeleton of my pipeline that is written which is very similar to whatever was the pipeline syntax that i showed you in the previous step so i just copy this out here and then paste it here so what i have here is i've written on the high level skeleton without really putting in the actual steps required for checking out rather or rather running those build scripts so i've got four steps one is the git checkout step the build step unit test quality gate and possibly yeah, the deploy all right so i need to put in the actual scripts that is required for first checking out the repository from my github server so this is where i will make use of this pipeline syntax so as i mentioned earlier you have a bunch of help that is available for you to figure out the actual scripts that is required for you to write within your pipeline so what i wanted to do is check out something from git so it's git related so search on git and you'll find this option so i got to specify my git repository url and my credentials so let me look at the repository url this would be my repository url so let me copy this i'm going to copy the https url of my repository and branch is good and uh, one thing that you got to notice is for now the repository is anyway a public repository on github so even though if i don't specify any credentials that would work for me still but in case you have a repository which needs strictly a username and password to be specified you can kind of add it out here using add jenkins and you can give your username and password out here but for now i don't need any of these things so i'm going to just say git checkout or rather the url of my repository and what we want is the master branch for now i have only one branch on my github server so this is good for me so this is what i exactly i want to do as a part of the script so if i click this this is the script that i need to put in my build script so i come over here and this is what will check out the code from my repository all right so now once i get my code onto my repository from my repository rather it will grab those code all these batch files and get it onto my jenkins workspace now i'll have to run these batch files as a part of each of my step so let me look at what would be the syntax so the first one that i want to run would be my um, build.bat all right so i want to run a batch file all right and what is the name of the batch file that i want to run i want to run this build.bat so generate pipeline script 
this is all that I got to specify as a part of my build step and then unit test I got to just change this to unit I think that's what I have in my repository okay that is unit and then deploy and quality Q capital quality and this one would be deploy all right so this piece of code will actually get into my repository and check out my source code and grab it and take it to the Jenkins workspace so from this workspace since all the files are there in the root directory of this workspace it will run these batch files one after the other all right let me save this and let me try to run my pipeline all right so it runs a lot of things in the background trying to get the source code from my repository whoa 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 that was fast all right so it pulled out all the source code from my repository the last commit message from where the source code was pulled out it was this create deploy dot bat that looks good i'm saying building checked out project building the checked out project this is what i had in my build dot bat if i'm not mistaken okay building the project that's it. what is there with the timestamp running unit test cases unit dot bat it is running the unit dot bat and then giving me the date and timestamp okay so all these kind of passed and if i go back to the project i will also see this beautiful view of how exactly what is the time that was taken for checking out the repository running the build on bat running the unit test cases quality gates and all this isn't that pretty simple now let me modify my previous job or rather let me put up a new job for making use of an agent wherein i could delegate a job to an agent typically agents can be brought up on any other remote machines other than where your primary agent can server is running in case you don't know or you don't know how to start up these agents i would strongly recommend that you refer to our previous uh, jenkins video on the simply learn youtube channel all right so let me just check the status of my agent for now yes he's offline so let me start this agent because agent is not running so I have the agent uh, set up in my C colon agents. So let me copy the script file that is required for starting my agent. Let me go to the agents folder, open up a command prompt, and let me try to bring up my agent. All right, so the agent is up and running. For now, I don't have the luxury of starting my agent on a different machine. So my agent is running on my the same machine, but the agent's workspace is C colon agent, while my primary jenkins server is running uh, has the workspace out here c colon program files 86 and this is the workspace of my jenkins all right i hope you can kind of differentiate those two all right so now what i want is i will look at the same job that i put in earlier or rather modify that let the steps be the same but i don't want to run that on my master server let me try to delegate that using the script so let me put up an agent scripted job all right it will be a pipeline rep job i would say okay and let me copy this was a step that i had put in for my previous job so agent any so what i'm going to do now is i don't want this to be running on any other agent i want this to be running on the agent whose label is let me check what is the label of my agent that is running okay so this is the name of my agent okay windows node so let me just copy that there all right so with a very subtle change instead of saying agent any i'm going to run or rather i'm going to specify the agent who will be running this job is the one who has got the label as windows node so this agent that i brought on my system has got the name as windows node and it is configured to pick up any job that matches the label uh, to which any job is kind of delegated so let me come back to my jobs where is my scripted agent job i've got too many jobs running all right so this is my agent scripted job that i left halfway through so here in the pipeline what i'm going to do is, is this is all i'm going to need so the job remains the same git checkout is going to check out from the same repository I run the batch files accordingly but this change is just to ensure that this job is kind of delegated on the agent all right so this would be my agent job let me save this 
let me get back to the dashboard and let me run it from here if you see this you know the master and agent are both idle as of now let me try to run this agent scripted job all right so the agent kind of kicked in and there was a job that was delegated to the agent if i look at what is there in the console output he's pretty much doing whatever was there as a part of the job but the interesting thing to notice that this is the new workspace or rather this is delegated to the agent and the agent's workspace is this particular folder so this is where it's going to get all this stuff uh, run the whole thing and um, you know the flow is pretty much the same the only thing is this whole thing ran on the agent if i need to check my agent I would see the workspace out here agent scripted job if you look at this all the batch files are here and this is where the job was kind of delegated to run so with a very subtle change in in the scripting i can ensure that the jobs are kind of delegated onto the agent the pipeline job specifically as i mentioned earlier jenkins provides you two different ways of uh, writing pipelines called the scripted and the declarative the first one that was launched was the scripted pipeline this is heavily based on Groovy scripting since Jenkins uh, ships along with the Groovy engine. So this was the first script or the first support for pipeline that was provided by Jenkins in 2.0. This needs a little bit of a learning curve since uh, Groovy is a wonderful script. Understanding that may be a little cumbersome. But then once you kind of master it, you can write really powerful scripts based on Groovy. At a very high level, this is what um, a typical scripted pipeline would look like. Something called as a node. Node represents the agent or the actual box on which your job would be running. And then a bunch of stages are put out, which each of the stage, along with the steps that needs to be covered as the part of those stages, listed one below the other. So all these stages, if they run peacefully, then the whole task is kind of marked as run successfully since understanding groovy or learning groovy was a little tough for many of the people so this is a new one from jenkins wherein it provides you a much simple and uh, friendly syntax for writing pipelines without really needing to understand or without really needing to uh, learn some groovy scripting again there's a very subtle change between these and you there are a lot of lookups for uh, figuring out what is a better pipeline for you to kind of write but if you can figure out the difference or if you can try to find that particular piece of code which kind of helps you out with your pipeline either of the scripts there's not really any difference in writing or kind of delivering your pipeline using either of these two methods all right so declarative pipeline is something like this where you have an agent you can specify the agent label or if you can say agent any it will pick up whatever is an available agent and run the job and then you have something called a stages stages is nothing but a collection of uh, stage and stage could have multiple steps defined within this so if any of the steps in any of the stage fails then that particular complete stage and the build is marked as failure so very subtle difference between both these uh, two syntax but using either of these you can write powerful uh, scripts for your pipeline now let me come up with an example where i'm going to at least demo one of the feature where you could run a master and a slave job in parallel so let me come up with a demo for that particular scenario let me put up a new job for my parallel agent pipeline let me call this and this would be a pipeline project I don't want anything here. Let me look at uh, the pipeline script that I have. Uh, pipeline, agent, none, stages. And there's a first stage where this would be a kind of non-parallel stage where there's a need for you to possibly pull out the source code from one of the repositories and possibly unit test it. If all the unit test cases pass, then possibly you want to deploy it to one of the test environments. That would be what would be there as a part of the non-parallel stage. And then you may have a bunch of tests that could be run. And assuming that you know you have a Windows node, you have a Linux node, you have some other kind of an operating system based node, you could run these stages in parallel. So for just for demonstration, I've just put in two parallel stages. In parallel is the keyword that you're going to use for running tests parallelly. So I would say parallel stage test on Windows and I'm going to run this in my Windows node. Well, I could run a bunch of steps that I want out here. And then in the other stage or other step, what I want is I will run something else on, on my master. As long as this parallel keyword is encountered, Jenkins will ensure that these two stages are run parallelly. For now, I have both these things running on my same machine, but assuming that these were running on different boxes, you could kind of visualize it as these two steps are going to be started parallelly. 
without really any dependency on each other and then you could wait for the test results and then based upon whether both of these steps passed or failed if one of them failed then we could kind of mark the build accordingly so let me copy this pretty pretty simple script let me put this out here and now let me save this out and let me try to build this right there you go this stage will be executed first this is the non-parallel stage that's going to happen then the task one on agent task one one master followed by as i said since i have only one node or rather one system on with both these things are running simultaneously you would not really see a benefit of this but assuming that you have a couple of boxes on which you have multiple agents running you will possibly want to run your selenium tests on the windows box because selenium brings up some of those ui which needs a browser you could possibly need some regression tests that could run on linux boxes or linux agents and then you can kind of break down your tasks into multiple things that is running on multiple systems at the same time and then uh, collate all the results okay one final thing all right now i have all my particular um, job or rather the steps required for my um, pipeline put down in, in, in terms of the scripts and this is saved in this particular job that's not a good or a recommended approach so what i'll do is i'll copy all of these steps out here and then what needs to be done is actually let's say let me go back to this repository the most preferred approach is where you create something called as a Jenkins file Jenkins file and you paste all the scripts that is required for your pipeline now this is in a true sense the DevOps approach where I'm going to save this out so if at all you have a pipeline defined for your project uh, the best place to kind of um, put out your configurations for the pipeline is within your repository so this may be a different project that I was referring to, but assuming that you have your project where you know you have to define your pipeline, instead of putting that as a particular job on Jenkins and fearing that if Jenkins fails or the jobs, there's a crash and then you lose out your job configuration, the best approach is to use a Jenkins file. Put all the steps that is required, the tried tested steps that is required as a part of your Jenkins file, and then you can put out a job that can pull the source code from here as well as use the steps that is defined in the Jenkins file. So let me end up by putting up another job, which is a true DevOps kind of a job. So I would say DevOps pipeline, and this is a pipeline script. And then I'm not going to say any of these things. I would say the pipeline script is from the source code management. So my pipeline script is already defined. It is present in SCM. So what is my SVN? I mean, what is my source code repository? This is my source code repository where I already have this. So let me copy this URL. This is my URL. I don't need any credentials because the um, repository is anyway in public repository. That is all that is required, I would say. And the scripted file, it automatically it picks up Jenkins file. All right, so let me save this. Let me build this. So that's the beauty of DevOps, wherein I have a pipeline that is defined and instead of putting the pipeline as a job, because pipeline is nothing but a configuration, the configuration is also checked into the source code repository and any changes to this pipeline, instead of putting that modifications in the job, these are all captured as a part of my repository. So the changes are nicely configured so that, you know, we know who's done what change. That concludes our tutorial on Jenkins pipelines and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. For more such learnings, keep watching our Simply Learn YouTube channel. Thank you so much and have a great day. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.